What up, dude bros? I'm Frank. This is a video review of the Nerf Ultra Speed. This blaster in the Ultra series is a fully automatic flywheel magazine fed blaster with a pretty fast rate of fire. Let's get into it. Included is the blaster, two magazines, darts, and instructions. Six C-type batteries are required and are installed as shown. But first, I'd like to take a moment to thank this video sponsor, Hero Wars. Whoa, bro, what are you doing here? Get back to where you came from. Hey, what about my world? What's wrong with it? Aren't you from a childish video game? That is not true. Hero Wars has vibrant graphics, cool gameplay, and a user-friendly interface. Alrighty then, let's give that a try, audience. Yeah, tell them more about it. In Hero Wars, everyone can find a character to suit themselves. They have cyborgs, aliens, vampires, even furries won't be disappointed. Look at Chaba. He's an awesome tank who literally devours his enemies. But Celeste is the real S tier. She can switch between a DPS dark form and a healer light form, which makes her useful in any situation. Besides, check out this sexy outfit that dropped for her. There's no equal to Hero Wars. You're gonna play it on the subway, at lectures, or even while playing something else. It's very easy to start playing, but assembling a perfect team of heroes is an art in itself. For example, Mojo the Shaman can't heal Darkstar the Elf as efficiently as the good Grandma Martha can, while the slow Cleaver makes a great pair with the swift Isaac. Hero Wars is a world of six unique modes, more than 300 Guild War servers, and 100 million players. You can play alone or see who among you and your friends is the top dog. Join the game now and get a super chest with five top heroes, one of them is a secret, as well as 600 emeralds and 30,000 gold. Scan this QR code or download the game from the link in the description box below. Thank you again to Hero Wars for sponsoring this video. If you'd like to download the game, link in the description box below. I now return you to your regularly scheduled foam flinging entertainment. External overview of the speed starting up at the front. There's no in-strike barrel lug, but above the muzzle is the front iron sight and a sling mount right here. And down below is a vertical grip. This is permanently fixed in place. This is not a removable attachment. And because of that, it's really stable. It's rock solid. Moving up on top, we have an in-strike tack rail so you can mount an optic if you'd like to. And that's built into this rather large carry handle. And in the rear of the carry handle, we have another sling attachment point right here. Moving on, on the left side of the blaster is an access door. So you can open that to get your fingers in there to clear out jams and malfunctions. Surprisingly, I didn't experience any jams or malfunctions even with the super fast rate of fire. To the magazine, to pull the mag out, you hit the mag release, which is right here. It's a very smooth magazine release and a pretty smooth mag well. To the magazines themselves, two magazines are included and they each hold 12 rounds. One half of the magazine is transparent red, the other half is opaque black. However, this is a totally new magazine design. It is not compatible with standard ultra magazines and this magazine does not go into any other ultra blaster. This magazine design is unlike any other Nerf magazine I've seen. It doesn't have the typical lips like most Nerf magazines to hold the darts in. It uses this new detent system, which has a little peg right here to hold the darts in. And once you put this magazine into the blaster, it actually unlatches and completely releases. Like that. But loading the magazine is very simple. You can just push your darts in like that. Again, the capacity is 12 darts per magazine. And a side effect of this magazine system is when you put the magazine in, that detent is now hit. So if you pull the magazine out of the blaster and there's still ammo in the magazine, you're gonna lose darts and it keeps happening. It's just the nature of this detent system. It's very unique. So I think this blaster is designed to just mag dump. You're really not supposed to reload halfway through. But with this rate of fire, that's not hard to do at all. <laughs> so it's a totally different magazine. It only works with this blaster. It's totally proprietary. However, the magazine and the magazine well still work pretty smoothly together. And this magazine release is in the perfect position for a very fast retrieval. And with a name like Speed, it's all about speed, man. Speed reloads. Let's go fast. Gotta go fast. And this blaster ships with Ultra Accu Strike darts, which are definitely worth using over standard ultra darts. They are more consistent and more accurate. Moving on to the trigger, this is an electronic, fully automatic system. There's no selector switch, it's full auto only. You can fire off just one at a time, but because the rate of fire is so fast, I very often shot two darts on accident when I was only trying to shoot one. You can just shoot one dart at a time if you're super careful with it, but this blaster is designed to go full auto. And it's also worth noting this trigger guard is very small. The trigger is very short. The width of my fingers are pretty normal, but if you have super fat fingers and you want to wear like winter gloves, you really won't be able to get your fingers 
finger into this trigger guard. I'm not sure why they did that. This trigger is not very comfortable. But because it's an electronic full auto system and not a mechanical semi-auto system, the comfort of the trigger is not a big deal. Because you're just pressing an electronic switch, you're not pushing the dart in manually like with the Strife. So not ideal, but not too big a deal. But that brings me down to the rev trigger. Now this is a flywheel power blaster, so of course you want to hold that rev trigger for a moment before you start firing. And in that sense, it works like every other rev switch, but this mechanical design is terrible. These rounded off rev triggers only work if the radius is bigger than your finger, but it's not. This is a tiny, tiny little rev switch. And even when you push the rev switch all the way in to fire, it's still protruding. So it's still jutting into your finger. It's super uncomfortable. This contrasts with something like the Strife rev trigger design, which is my favorite design. When you push the rev switch in on a Strife, it disappears into the shell. It's very different than this ultra rev switch, which sticks out even when you push it all the way in. This rev trigger design is terrible. It's extremely uncomfortable and very distracting when you're shooting this blaster. And it's not even because I'm an adult with a big hand. This is going to be uncomfortable for every human finger. Again, what hands are they designing these ultra blasters for? Like not humans? I, I don't know. Now down to the grip. This grip is surprisingly comfortable. Being a thumb hole stock, it obviously blocks your wrist movement back here. But other than that, it's actually a pretty comfortable grip. I have very large hands and it's not cramping or alienating to my hand at all. Yet I think a smaller hand will be able to grip this blaster just fine. The grip itself is pretty comfortable, but the rev trigger makes your whole hand super uncomfortable. That's not the fault of the grip though. That's just a rev trigger that makes the whole blaster kind of awkward to hold. Moving on over here, we have the battery tray. This blaster runs on six C-type batteries. Being flywheel powered, of course, this blaster will not operate without the batteries installed. Because they're C-type batteries, it is a little bit hefty, but surprisingly, the balance is pretty good. Based on the location, it looks like it would be really back heavy, but it doesn't feel that way at all. The weighting and balance of this blaster is surprisingly good. And down here, we have a place for magazine storage. This lets you reload really fast. This magazine capture system isn't as simple as something like the long shot stock though. It took a little bit of practice to learn how to put the magazine in quickly. You can't put it straight in, you kind of have to rock it in at an angle. But then when you go to retrieve the magazine, pulling straight out is very simple. And through my testing and all the hardcore parkour, the magazine never came out. And this is the sort of feature that if you don't want to use it, just don't. You put this in a magazine pouch or something else. But overall, the extra magazine storage is pretty well designed. Back to the stock, the stock is fixed in place. It's not adjustable or removable. And to note on the proportions of this blaster, visually, I think it looks a little bit unbalanced. They're going after the submachine gun look, the SMG. Looks kind of chunky for an SMG, but then when you get your hands on it, it kind of made more sense to me. And having this fixed in place vertical grip make this one really solid and fun to use. I'm only mentioning that because cosmetically it looks unbalanced, it looks super wonky, but once I got my hands on it, my opinion of that totally changed. But on the note of cosmetics, on this side it looks really cool. Then you flip it over and it's like, what? Hasbro, wouldn't it cost like three cents to paint the other side of the blaster? Come on. <laughs> it's like night and day, this looks really cool, and then this looks just really boring and bland. Considering the price of this blaster, that's a little bit disappointing. But that is an external overview of the Ultra Speed. Now I'll show you the blaster firing. Shooting AccuStrike Ultra Darts. Now trying to use manual trigger control, there's no selector switch to just fire one at a time. Now shooting regular black Nerf Ultra Darts. Operating this blaster was pretty fun. The rate of fire is really impressive for an unmodified Nerf blaster. I think the blaster handles well. This magazine release and the magwell are designed really well for speed reloads. It's really easy to dump the first mag and quickly get that second mag in there. So using this blaster was lots of fun and I did not experience any jams or malfunctions. With this rate of fire, that's surprising. So good operation, good play experience overall. To compare this blaster to other Ultra Blasters, I put it up on my chronograph. With the included AccuStrike Ultra Darts, it achieved an average velocity of 91 feet per second. And with regular Black Ultra Ultra darts achieved an average velocity of 90 feet per second. So it's shooting very similar to other Ultra Blasters on the market. It is worth noting that Chrono Test is at max RPM every trigger pull. If you could see in the video, there is a little bit of bog, so the end of your magazine doesn't shoot quite as fast as the first few shots. With this rate of fire on alkalines, that is to be expected. You're gonna experience a little bit of motor bog. That's the objective information I can provide on this blaster. Now to my personal opinion. Overall, I'm pleasantly surprised with the Ultra Speed. I actually really enjoyed using it. Has a fast rate of fire, pretty good chrono velocity, and the balance and ergonomics 
graphics are surprisingly good. I say surprisingly because it doesn't look visually balanced at all. It looks kind of wacky. But when you put your hands on it, it handles very well. So I really enjoyed playing with this one. A serious complaint I have to say about this blaster is this rev trigger. This rev switch is terrible. It's so dumb. It's jarring. It's uncomfortable. It's distracting. It's so annoying because every other bit of the ergonomics seem really well thought out. It's pretty comfortable to use this blaster. But my middle finger is legitimately sore because of my testing procedure. It's just uncomfortable. It's not something I want to put my hand on. I don't know why they made the decision to make the rev trigger this way. Other rev switches in the Ultra series are designed similarly to this one, but they're bigger and longer. This one is super short and it's very uncomfortable. It's my biggest complaint about this blaster. Yeah, I can get my Dremel and sand this down to make it a little bit more comfortable with the sanding drum. But given the cost of this blaster, I'm just very disappointed in this design decision. This blaster is really expensive and for them to overlook such a basic thing, it just surprises me. And while I'm complaining about the blaster, it looks really cool from this side, especially with the red transparent mags, but it's super boring over here. If this were a Busby blaster for like 15 bucks, I wouldn't be complaining. But given the price, come on Hasbro, paint both sides. And a note on the magazines. It's a bit of a bummer that this blaster is not compatible with other Ultra magazines, but I imagine the redesign is because of the much faster rate of fire. They might not have been able to get the original Ultra mag to keep up with the rate of fire of this blaster. But if you're gonna make a proprietary new magazine that's not compatible with anything else, why not make it a double stack? A double stacking mag with normal nerf darts probably wouldn't work because it would apply too much pressure and the darts would kind of deform. But Ultra darts are styrofoam. You can apply a lot of pressure to the sides of these without them deforming. That's the perfect opportunity to make a double stacking mag. And with this fast rate of fire, you dump the 12 round magazine very quickly. So I really would have liked to see a double stacking mag. You could have made it chunkier in the back and had a much higher capacity without making it a bulky drum mag. And again, at the price point, that doesn't seem like an unreasonable ask. So my play experience was positive. I do have a pretty positive opinion on this blaster. I just feel like they left a lot on the table. They could have made this much better than it is. And now getting to the question to buy or not to buy. First and foremost, do you want ultra darts? If you don't care about ultra darts, there are other fully automatic magazine fed blasters that are much cheaper than this one. If you get like a rapid strike hyper fire or turbine, you can get a high capacity drum mag. Having two 12 round magazines is pretty limited capacity and you blow through this pretty fast. And I've not been able to find these magazines sold separately. So if you dump your whole load and this is your primary, you're kind of out of luck compared to the rapid strike or a standard elite blaster where you can buy a bunch of magazines and have a bunch preloaded on your body in tactical gear or something. So the muzzle velocity is good. The rate of fire is good. The ergonomics other than the rev switch are pretty good, but it's a very expensive blaster and it would be kind of impractical to run this as a primary. So I don't think a whole lot of people are going to buy this blaster and think it was worth their money. It's a pretty solid blaster, but it's a little impractical as a primary and it's wildly overpriced. So I hesitate to even make a purchase recommendation. I don't think most people should purchase this. If you want a full auto magazine fed blaster, rapid strike, hyper fire, or turbine are the way to go. Interchangeable magazines, higher capacity drums are available. Those are just more practical as a primary. And this is pretty big and heavy to run as a slung secondary. And the rate of fire is pretty good for an unmodified nerf blaster, but the aftermarket scene is really dominating that. Worker has some high rate of fire blasters. The Woozy has really high rate of fire. And those are lighter, smaller packages that you can carry as a slung secondary. This one is too big to fill that role and a little too impractical to run as a primary. So I don't know, that's a pretty scattered opinion and purchase recommendation. So I hesitate to make a firm purchase recommendation on this one. Hopefully I've laid out all the information and my thought process so you can decide for yourself if this is something that you want to purchase. If you'd like to buy an Ultra Speed, I'll put a purchase link in the description box below. That concludes this video review. Thanks so much for watching, bros, and as always, stay tactical.